For years, many One Piece fans have wondered, what even is the point of the Shichibukai from an in-universe standpoint? Most of them are terrible at their jobs of hunting pirates, and they actively undermine the world government. So today we are going to be ranking all 11 Shichibukai members based on how good they were at their jobs. So at number 11, we have Blackbeard. Blackbeard became a Shichibukai by turning in Ace, which is good. But then he used this position to raid Impel Down and freed or recruited a bunch of level 6 prisoners, which is not good. He then attacked Marineford, stole Whitebeard's Gragara no Mi, and used his momentum to become an Emperor of the Sea. Although to be fair, the last part came after he had already resigned as a Shichibukai. Number 10 is Doflamingo. Doflamingo did occasionally listen to the world government, like when he fought at the Battle of Marineford or when he tried to kill Moria right afterwards. But Doflamingo also did a lot of things that are harmful to the world government. He is the owner of a slave auction house. He sells weapons on the black market. He overthrew Dressrosa and turned a bunch of its citizens into toys for over a decade before just destroying the entire kingdom physically with his birdcage. Worst of all, he supplied Kaido and his army with artificial devil fruits. The same Kaido that wanted to start the biggest war the world has ever seen. So yeah, Doflamingo was pretty awful as a warlord. At number 9, we have Crocodile. To Crocodile's credit, he did do his share of pirate hunting. He founded Baroque Works, a collection of bounty hunters. He also tried to take out Whitebeard during his first years as a Shichibukai, although that didn't end well for him. But now onto the negatives, Crocodile created a drought in Alabasta incited a civil war, attempted to overthrow the kingdom before almost blowing up the capital. He did all this to flying Pluton, a battleship with a really powerful cannon so that he can use it to blow some more stuff up, and eventually to use it to overthrow the world government. Crocodile basically did a lot of what Doflamingo did, but not nearly as successful. Number 8 is Boa Hancock. Hancock goes on pirate expeditions sometimes, but we don't know if she's actually hunting pirates. From what we've seen of Hancock, she's been nothing but a negative asset to the world government. Hancock initially refused the summon to Marineford by attempting to turn Vice Admiral Momonga and his entire crew into stone. She then smuggled Luffy into Impel Down, causing many dangerous prisoners to escape. While Hancock was at Marineford, she was actively sabotaging the Marines' war efforts. She destroyed a bunch of pacifistas, turned many of her Marine allies into stone, and handed Luffy the key to Ace's handcuffs. Remember, she did all this during the battle that, according to Sengoku, could have been the end of the Marines. After the war, she harbored Luffy on one of her islands, allowing him to train for two years. And now, Luffy is one of the biggest threats to the world government. Excellent work, Hancock. Number 7 is Kuma. Kuma volunteered his body to Vegapunk to experiment on, which led to the creation of the pacifistas. Even before the surgery to remove his personality, Kuma had been mostly obedient to the world government. But Kuma is a revolutionary spy. Kuma also saved the Straw Hats from Kizaru, which had immediate consequences when Luffy invaded Impel Down and Marineford just a couple of days later. And even after his personality was erased, he spent the next two years defending the Sunny for the Straw Hats, making him completely useless to the world government during that time. Number 6 we have Weevil. This one is pretty straightforward. Weevil has taken out a lot of pirates associated with Whitebeard, 
but at the same time, he has also caused a lot of civilian casualties. However, Kizaru still considers him to be a net positive for the world government. Next, at number 5 is Jinbei. From what we've seen of Jinbei's days as a Shichibukai, he seemed to have mostly been hanging out around Fishman Island. We don't really know if he was actively hunting pirates, but he did turn Karibo into the Marines, even though it was after he had resigned from the Ishichibukai. So we can assume that he at least captures pirates that are hostile to Fishman Island. Prior to Marine Ford, he seemed to have a decent relationship with Sengoku, who had thought that Jinbei would be the most cooperative out of the Shichibukai when it came to Marine Ford. But just by not conspiring against the world government, Jinbei is already a much better Shichibukai than most people on this list. Jinbei does have a couple of red marks against him though. He refused the call to Marine Ford. He defended Whitebeard against ambitious pirates like Ace. And worst of all, he freed Arlong, which allowed him to terrorize Nami's hometown, Kokoyashi Village. But overall, Jinbei was a pretty good Shichibu guy. Number 4 is Buggy. As a warlord, Buggy ran a mercenary company called Buggy's Delivery. We don't really know much about the activities of Buggy's Delivery because we've only seen two pages of it. After Doflamingo's defeat, Buggy sent his mercenaries to cover the places that Doflamingo used to sell his weapons in. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. The mercenaries could be defending kingdoms and islands against pirate invaders. There have been a lot of those throughout the story of One Piece. But Buggy also told his men to pillage and encouraged them to conduct pirate activities. So that's not great. Either way, Buggy is reducing the amount of rogue pirates on the sea by recruiting them into his crew, which is a plus for the world government. Uh, number 3 is Mihawk. Mihawk is one of a few Shichibukai that we've actually seen fight pirates. Twice, he demolished Don Krieg and his fleet. He also fights swordsmen that dared to challenge him. And these swordsmen often happen to be pirates like Zoro. Mihawk contributed greatly at the Battle of Marineford. He fought Luffy. He fought Crocodile. He fought Vista. He fought Buggy. And most important of all, he fought these two guys. But Mihawk also trained Zoro for two years, and now Zoro is one of the strongest pirates alive. Other than this, Mihawk has an almost perfect record as a Shichibukai. Number two is Moria. Despite not being the strongest, Moria was actually a really good warlord. He has a floating fortress dedicated to hunting pirates and he puts it near Sabodi Archipelago, where a lot of strong pirates tend to gather. He has taken at least 1,000 shadows, so his pirate count is pretty high. Moria also fought the hardest out of the Shichibukai during Marineford. He landed the finishing blow on Ors Jr. He got beat up by Jinbei, but continued to fight until the end of the war. However, not all the shadows Moria has collected were from pirates. When Luffy punched the shadows out of Moria, we see that some of them returned to marines and even civilians. So that's a minus point for him. Moria also still has aspirations to become Pirate King, which is his motivation behind collecting shadows and an army of corpses. Although I don't think he was ever close to actually acting out against the world government. Moria was pretty much the model Shichibukai. He hunted pirates and he fought when he was asked to. Despite all this, he was the first Shichibukai that the world government chose to get rid of. But we'll talk more about the world government later. At number 1, the Shichibukai that was the best at his job was Law. 
To become a Shichibukai, Law captured the hearts of 100 pirates. Law then went to Punk Hazard to shut down Caesar's illegal operations. During this time, he also rescued the children that were kidnapped and experimented on by Caesar, and he defeated the corrupt Vice Admiral Virgo. He then played a major role in overthrowing Doflamingo and freeing the people of Dressrosa from his tyranny, as well as shutting down the Smile Factory that was supplying Kaido with artificial devil fruits. He did ally himself with the Straw Hat Pirates, but it was for the sake of defeating the greater evil that were Doflamingo and Kaido. Law had pretty much been a perfect Chichibukai. He actively worked to take down powerful pirates, but he was still stripped of his position by the world government. So what does this list tell us? It tells us that the world government are terrible employers. Although there are a lot of Shichibukai that were absolutely garbage at their positions, it was actually the most productive members like Law and Moria that were punished. When you penalize hard work, you get employees like Hancock, who does less than the bare minimum. The marines complain that the Shichibukai are no different from any other pirates, but why would they be? The world government has created a toxic work environment where the Shichibukai are not rewarded for their work. They have no incentive to do their jobs. If anything, it's better for them to keep a low profile. Being a Shichibukai also has no possibility of career advancements. Once you become a Shichibukai, you've already reached the pinnacle of your pirating career. There are no promotions or any ways to climb the corporate ladder within the ranks of the world government. This is why warlords like Doflamingo and Crocodile look for alternative ways to expand their influence. Had Doflamingo been given the possibility of working his way back to becoming a celestial dragon again, he probably wouldn't have done half of the things he did. So while most of the Shichibukai were useless and awful employees, it was the world government that encouraged this kind of work, culture, and behavior. Thanks for listening to my presentation.